Good morning and welcome everyone to our Hands-On Exotics Live Animal Show brought to you today by Waterloo Public Library. Thank you so much for joining us. The Waterloo Public Library has all kinds of wonderful programs for you to enjoy during the summer. You can go to our website at WPL to see the programs that we have to offer for free. And while you're there, you might want to check out our summer reading clubs as well. We have summer reading clubs this year for the whole family, for preschool, for school age, teens, and adults. There are fun activities for you to do and also some prizes to win. So please go and check that out. But today you're here to see an animal show by Hands On Exotics. They are from Toronto and they have several wonderful animals with them today to share with you. Now, if you have any questions about the animals you're going to see, then please click on the comment section and write your, answer, uh, your questions and we will do our best to answer all the questions during the show. Okay, now with us today, we have, we have Seth from Hands On Exotics. There he is. Hi, Seth. Hi. Thanks for having us. Okay, so we are ready to get started. Today we're doing a program we call New World Voyage. So we're gonna be meeting animals that are from the New World, that's North and South America. And our very first animal is actually right behind me. And he's super excited. And his name is Fallon. So, hi, Fallon. Do you wanna to wave to everyone? Say hi. Hi, everyone. So Fallon here is a really cool type of bird found in South America called a macaw. And a macaw is actually the largest type of flying parrot in the world. <laughs> He's waving at you guys. Now Fallon here has these big, beautiful wings. Big bird, big bird. Good job that he uses to fly through the rainforest in order to find all of his favorite foods. Now, Fallon here likes to eat nuts, fruits, seeds, and some veggies that he finds throughout the rainforest. So he finds different fruits during different ah. seasons. And you guys will notice that all macaw species are brightly colored. For Fallon, he is blue, yellow, green, orange, and he has this really cool face where his skin is showing. He has some stripes down his face, sort of like a zebra. Now this coloration helps Fallon camouflage in the wild. So animals that might want to eat them, like a uh, margay or an ocelot, can't see him. So he can stay nice and camouflaged. Did you want a grape? No. Okay, so Fallon here has some really cool feet as well. His feet are called zygodactyl. And that means two toes forwards and two toes backwards. And that allows him to hold or perch on a branch, but it also allows our friend to hold his favorite food as well in his hands. Oh, thanks for showing us your feet there, little man. Now, Fallon here also has a really cool beak. His beak is called a hookbill, and that beak allows him to crush open all of his favorite nuts and seeds. So all parrots have that hookbill. And we'll be meeting another uh, parrot friend at the end that might do some more behaviors for us. But for now, Fallon's gonna say bye. Thank ah! you. And he's gonna head off into his enclosure with his other bird friends. And hopefully he's not gonna scream too much. As we have our other friends that we're gonna meet next. Okay. Now our next friend here is Baxter. Hi everyone. <laughs> Now, Baxter here is a ferret. So there's lots of different types of weasels that you can find uh, across North America, and especially in Canada. And the most endangered animal in all of Canada, uh, and endangered means an animal that's going extinct or there's very few of them left, is a black-footed ferret. So very similar to my friend Baxter here, black-footed ferret. And there's only a few of them left in all of Canada. And zoos and aquariums actually keep animals safe like that. And when they have um, babies, they'll return them back to the wild, hopefully repopulating 
or we replenishing that uh, population of ferrets in the wild. Now, ferrets have very, very flexible bodies. You say Baxter here can do some side to side. He can also touch his own toes. Some of you guys can probably touch your toes at home too. There we go. <laughs> and so he's flexible and that allows Baxter to go down tunnels. And in those tunnels, he'll find his favorite foods, which include mice and rats. So Baxter here has very sharp teeth to help him with hunting. Here we go. Now in the prairies where he's from, there's other animals that live in those tunnels that he hunts in as well. And those animals are called prairie dogs. They could be a delicious meal for him. There's even a type of owl called a burrowing owl. And so owls that live in tunnels underground as well, the country of the day. Just super weird to think about owls living underground. Um, some penguins also live underground as well. I believe they're in Australia. So we're going to put my little friend Baxter back. He's going to come say hello real close so you guys can see his little snout and his mask. You'll see a lot of nocturnal animals like raccoons have masks on their face. Okay. We're going to put him back now. Now our next friend coming out is a Canadian animal that you guys might see in your own backyard. And his name is Peter. Here we go. We have my friend Peter. So as you guys guessed it, Peter here is a rabbit. And this type of rabbit is called a cottontail rabbit. They get their name cottontail rabbit because they have a really, really cute tail. Oh, look at him dripping his grape. <laughs> Do you guys know rabbits have lips? They are just so cute. Okay, getting distracted. There's his cottontail. Now that tail will wave up and down to warn his friends of danger or help him communicate. So he can talk to his friends without making a sound. He's using his body language to communicate. Now, a lot of animals use body language, sound, or smell to talk to their friends. So he also sprays different scents on trees and grass in different areas to mark his territory. So he uses smell to talk to his friends. Now, Peter here has, oh, has very, you don't want any more grapes. Peter here has very cool front teeth that are very sharp that allow him to chew through different weeds and grass. So his teeth never stop growing, and that ensures that they are always sharp in order to help him find all of his favorite foods. Now, Peter here, his claws or his nails, I'll show you they're quite long, they also never stop growing. And that's so Peter can dig burrows. So rabbits like Peter live underground in burrows, and when they're scared, they can run to the burrow and they come out, of course, to find all their favorite foods. Now we call animals like Peter here crepuscular. And that means he likes to come out in the early evening and the early morning. So he's not quite diurnal during the day. He's not quite nocturnal at night. He is crepuscular. Okay, Peter, he's gonna give you guys a nose, a nose boink, boink. And we are gonna meet our next little friend. Thank you, Peter, for eating your grapes. Okay, so our next friend coming out is the world's softest animal. And this is a chinchilla. Now, chinchillas have the most fur of any animal in the entire world. And that keeps chinchillas extra warm in the snow-covered mountains where they're from in South America. They're in the Andes Mountains. So it's where you find uh, llamas and guanacos, along with the Andean condor, okay, one of the biggest birds in the entire world. Now, chinchilla's fur not only keeps them warm, but also helps them stay safe from mosquitoes, uh, parasites, fleas, lice, and ticks. So it keeps them bug proof so they don't have to wear bug spray when they are outside. Now, chinchillas have really cool hands. They have a thumb, sort of like we do, 
so they can hold on to their favorite snacks as they eat. There you guys, oh, we're eating so fast that we can't see you use your hands. There we go. So they're able to hold things with their hands. Pretty cool. Right now, Mochi's having a Cheerio snack. But in the wild, they would eat dry grasses um, that grow along the rocks and lichen. So different greens. Imagine chills have an amazing ability to balance. Because they live on the sides of rocks, they have to jump up and down the sides of the mountains. And so we are going to see if our chinchilla friend here is able to balance on my head. There we go. We're going to give you a cheerio for balancing. I'm going to come down so you guys can see. Good job. <laughs> now, I'm going to bring the chinchilla nice and close to the screen so you guys can see the chinchilla's whiskers. Now, the whiskers help the chinchilla feel around so it can feel where it's going and how big the tunnel it needs to run through is. So it helps it sense its environment. There we go. With the chills, uh, our things are moving. Whiskers are moving as he eats. Okay, so we are going to meet our next friend. And our next friend is an animal that we can find in our backyard. Okay. So our next friend here is a skunk. And his name is Peppy Le Pew. Now, Peppy Le Pew here, you guys will see, has very large claws. See those claws? And those claws help him dig for his favorite food, so worms and grubs. Now, once he digs those up, he munches them up. Now, he also eats fruits and vegetables, so he's an animal that eats meat and fruits and vegetables, so we call him an omnivore. So we're going to see if Peppy wants to have a snack now. We're going to give him a grape. There we go. So he's using his claws to get the grape. Ooh, he's got the grape. Where are you going to run away with it? You can eat it right here. Oh, there we go. He's going to eat the grape right on my hand here. Now, you guys, if you guys can see, Peppy has very big teeth as well for eating. And Peppy is in the weasel family. So he's very similar to our ferret that we met earlier in the shape of his body and his teeth. Also those nails. He's a little bit heavier animal. So he's bigger. Now, Peppy here has a stripe on him to help him warn predators of something very special and a big poofy tail. So he's warning animals that he can spray a stink. So he'd wave his tail around in order to warn animals he could spray a stink. And if you get sprayed, you will smell for up to three months. So animals generally leave skunks alone. It's a great way for him to stay safe. Peppy, so one of the questions on the screen, is he unscented or descented? So Peppy was someone's pet. So when Peppy was a baby, he was descented. Um, at, but we don't suggest skunks as pets. One, it's illegal. So you're not allowed to have them here in Ontario. Um, two, Peppy is very, very, very busy. So he wants to be running around uh, looking for food and making a big mess. So he would definitely want to destroy your house. Um, and his energy really comes around 9 p.m. Um, during the day, he looks really cute and cuddly. But about 9 p.m., he wakes up and he wants to basically get into everything. And he doesn't have anything in his brain that tells him to stop eating. So Peppy has to have his food measured. Um, cause in captivity, skunks tend to get a little bit too big and so they need their food measured so, um, they don't eat too much. Okay. Thank you. Peppy's falling asleep already here. He's like, oh, it's a lot of work for daytime. Okay, so our next friend we're going to meet is a reptile, and this is called a king snake. Now, king snakes get their name king snake 
because other snakes are often scared of them because they actually eat other snakes. So king snakes are able to eat venomous snakes and non-venomous snakes along with mice, frogs, and other small rodents like voles and moles. Um, so a venomous snake that a king snake might eat is a rattlesnake. So they have something in their blood that allows them to survive if they get bit by a venomous snake. And so they can eat a rattlesnake. King snakes also have the strongest squeeze of any snake in the world in comparison to their body size. So they are constrictors. That means they squeeze their food. Now we can see our friend Joker, the king snake here, is sticking his tongue in and out. That is Joker smelling or tasting the air, and that helps him find his next meal. So some people have pet snakes at home, and they can be a lot of fun. If you guys do your research, a snake can be a lot of fun, and it is also a little bit easier to take care of than a cat or a dog, as they only eat once every uh, once every two weeks, roughly. Um, Joker actually likes to eat every week, though, and um, he's very quiet, and he's quite cuddly. Um, and for those of you that have allergies, he's hypoallergenic, so he is really cool in that regard. Okay, I'm going to put Joker back. Okay, so our next friend is, is Joker an adult and will he get bigger? Great question. So Joker was full size. Um, he's roughly, I think, five feet long and he's full size adult. So he's, um, if you're thinking, uh, yeah, so he's bigger than a garter snake, but uh, not much larger. So uh, I say an average size of like a Canadian snake you might find in the wild. And you'll find the, I believe the longest snake in Canada is a, actually it's a black rat snake, not a king snake, but we do have king snakes. Okay, so our next friend here is from South America. And we have my friend Pansy. Now Pansy here is called a red-footed tortoise. <laughs> and that's because she has these orange and red uh sort of colors or scales on her legs and her head. And those help her camouflage. So tortoises live on land. And so their feet are not webbed like a turtle. They're more like an elephant's foot. So more like a club-like shape. And those help my friend walk around the rainforest nice and slowly looking for all of her favorite foods. So. Pansy here would eat fruits and vegetables that fall from the trees, maybe a mango or a banana. So we feed her lots of tropical fruits. And today she ate some veggies. In the wild, she'd find different vegetation, but today she ate kale um, and some pineapple. So lots of fresh fruits and veggies. Now her shell is her armor. So it is quite strong. And it's her, her spine is fused to her shell. And so there's only two animals in South America that can eat her other than humans. And that is a jaguar. So jaguars have the strongest crushing power of any cat in the world. And can actually crack open a tortoise's shell in their mouth, along with an eagle. So a harpy eagle can fly and grab a tortoise and they will drop the tortoise shell on a rock. Once a tortoise shell is cracked open, they will begin to feed on the tortoise's meat. But I'm sorry, uh, sorry, Pansy, for talking about that. But uh, thankfully, Pansy's nice and safe with us. She's about 20 years old, which is young. These guys can live 60, 80 years. Some tortoises can live over 100 years. So they have a very, very long time. So Pansy's still a young tortoise. Um, so if you're ever thinking of getting a pet turtle or tortoise, we suggest not doing it or adopting one from a rescue that's older because they do live so long. Uh, most people cannot care for them for their entire life and they are quite messy. And so they actually are a lot of work. 
Um, so that is Pansy, the red-footed tortoise. Um, do you guys have any questions about her before I put her back? Okay, so I'm gonna put her back. And our next friend, is Maui. And Maui is a iguana. There we go. He is camouflaged with my blue shirt right now. Uh, now most iguanas are green in color. We're used to seeing a green iguana, but Maui here uh, came out blue. So they can come in red, blue, green, yellow, uh, but only, only sometimes is really rare. Um, and Maui, the blue iguana, has really long toes. And that's so he can jump from tree to tree and catch himself on the branches and leaves. Maui also is an herbivore. That means all he eats is fruits and vegetables. Did you want a grape? Are you hungry? I know you had breakfast already. He's not hungry right now, but they eat fruits and vegetables. So if he was a human, he would be a vegan eating all that healthy food. Now we can see on Maui, he has these dots on the side of his face right here. And those reflect the moonlight at night and look like big eyes, so really big eyes. So if an animal is hunting, they're gonna see that and they're gonna be pretty scared of Maui. They're gonna think Maui's a big dragon, like way bigger than he actually is and they're hopefully gonna leave him alone. Maui also has a cool piece of skin on his chin here called a dewlap. There we go. And he does, he'll extend his skin in order to make himself look bigger and also to attract a mate, so another lizard. It's a pretty cool piece of skin there. And of course, now he has his spikes on his back, which are really cool too. So he looks like a dragon, a vegetable eating dragon. Okay, well, Maui's actually just a baby because iguanas can grow six feet long, which is long as me. So Maui's only maybe two and a half feet long. So he's a baby still, but he will get up to six feet long. There we go. Okay, well, we're gonna put Maui down. Okay, and our next friend coming out is Boo. Ooh, heavy, okay, there we go. Now Boo here is found in Central, a little bit in North America and South America. Boo is a boa constrictor. Now once again, he's flicking his tongue in and out to smell and taste the air. That helps him when he's hunting to find all his favorite food. Now you will see how big Boo is. Boa constrictors are some of the biggest snakes in the world, including the anaconda. Now they are quite slow. Boo moves very slow. He's what we call an opportunistic hunter. And that means Boo will sit in one spot, hidden, and wait for his food to come to him. Once he sees the monkey, he will... So he will um, grab it with his sharp teeth that are hooked. Then he will begin to spin around it, constricting it and swallowing it whole. So he is, where do you, uh, so the question Heather asked, where do you get your animals? That's a great question. So most of our animals were people's pets before. So um, sometimes kids end up uh, getting allergies to animals like rabbits. And so they'll give us their rabbit or um, in Boo's case, their owner had to move somewhere where they couldn't have a pet. And so we got Boo um, from them. So most of them used to be people's pets. Um, and that's why we talk about what might make a good pet or a bad pet, or uh, also doing our research when we are getting a pet because different animals fit different types of families and lifestyles. Um, though snakes are some of the easier uh, types of animals to take care of as they do sleep a lot. Boo eats once a month. So 
He also goes poop once a month, so it's pretty easy to clean his cage. But Boo's very large, so he can't be in a little glass aquarium. Boo needs a really big enclosure to slither around and to get exercise in and uh, just feel like he's more in a natural environment. So he needs a very big space to live. Now, Boo here is very, very sweet. So he's very calm and just has to hang out and just, yeah, enjoy. He's really liking summer, enjoying all the warmth. Okay, so I'm going to put Boo back because we are going to meet our last friend. And her name is Gypsy. Okay. So Gypsy here. is our friend and gypsy here is another type of parrot called a amazon parrot now as her name indicates she is from the amazon region of central and south america and as we talked before she has that hook bill and that beak allows her to break open her favorite nuts and seeds and of course, once again, another pair that is bright colors, blue, green, red, yellow, blue, and those help her with camouflage. Now, Gypsy here is gonna hopefully talk for us today. Gypsy, can you say hi? Say hi. 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 Good job. Oh, further down so we can see you when you say it. Gypsy, say hi. Can you say hi again? So parrots are able to learn how to talk. So um, some birds um, will, will already know their song, like a songbird when they're born, but parrots learn language from their parents. So if, they're, if the parent bird talks, then um, they will also learn to talk. Uh, ben asked, what does a snake like to do for fun? So snakes, I think what they would like to do for fun is to explore. So that would be giving them lots of space to slither. So when we uh, want to give our snakes some time out, we'll put them outside and let them slither through the grass or in a tree. So I think exploring. But I know snakes like eating. So I think for a fun thing for snakes would be the day they get to eat their food. Because, I mean, eating is really fun. Um, so Gypsy here, can you say anything else other than hi once? Okay. Hi, hi. So Gypsy was able to talk. She did say hi once. That might, all, that might be all we're getting out of her. Oh, you see yourself now. Can you say hi? Say hi, Gypsy. Hi. There we go. Hi. Hi. Now, Gypsy here can make different sound effects. Can you do a cough? Yeah. yeah can you do cough? <laughs> Good job. Can you cough again? <laughs> Good job. So she can do different sound effects. Gypsy here can also do her vocal exercises. La, la, la. La la la, la la la, la la la, la la la. Okay, and Gypsy's gonna try and sing a song for you guys. And so this goes out to everyone that had a. What? <laughs> Can you say hi? Okay. La 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 la. La la. La la la. Okay, Gypsy's gonna help me sing a song to everyone that had a birthday in the summer. This is for you guys. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Good job. Awesome. So that was to all our summer birthdays. A wonderful happy birthday from our friend Gypsy. And then because she did such a good job, we're going to give her a grape. And she is stuffed because she already ate breakfast. So yeah. Went, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Now, before Jizzy goes, she does love hockey. Yeah. Yeah, right? And who's your favorite sports team? Yeah. Who's your favorite sports team? Go, let's go. Go, let's go. That's right. Gypsy loves sports. So her favorite sports team is the Maple Leafs. Yeah. Uh, yeah, right? Can you say hi to everyone again? Say hi. Hi. Yeah. Good job. Can you say bye? Say bye. Bye. Good job. So Gypsy's the last animal. That we're meeting today. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. So good. 
Now, uh, does anyone have any uh, final questions before we finish up? Thanks, Heather. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much, Seth. That was awesome. And thank you for sharing all those wonderful animals with us. If anyone is interested in asking any more questions or following your favorite animals, you can um, uh, tag. Uh, that's the wrong. You can tag Hands On Exotics. Um, go into their Instagram or Facebook page. Okay, and thank you so much for joining us today. Have a wonderful day, and thanks again, Seth. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.